it, there's a lot to deconstruct for three hours. But, um, you know, I think back to one of the toughest days of my career. Um, I've been in public education for 17 years. And one of the toughest days of my career was the day that I picked up the phone. And on the other end of the phone was a police officer. It said, I need to let you know that there was a tragedy, but you're safe. He went on to tell me that there had been a shooting at City Hall in Kirkwood, that they weren't sure all the details. We've dealt with this many times over the last few years. Something's happened and we don't know all the details. My job that night was to walk around to all of our teachers. It was parent-teacher conference night. Parents were in the building, teachers were in the building. My job was to walk around and tell each one of our teachers there's been an incident, and you're safe. It's a difficult night. It was confusing. We've all been through that confusing, whether it's sitting in front of CNN, or we knew somebody that was in Boston, or we know somebody who's in Texas. We've been in that sense of confusion. And those moments worry me. Tonight, though, I remain hopeful. I hear about our work in the environment, public health, and education, being good parents, being tolerant, having empathy. We've created the recipe for sustainable communities tonight. We really have. But I think we have to begin to make a shift and go from a sense of just being a community that's been liberated. Like Kevin said, if you would have lived in this community 10 years ago, 20 years ago, there wouldn't be this sense of pride that exists today. When Dan Cotman, who was standing up here, was able to say, we've been brewing beer here for 20 years. This is a place where they welcomed me in the door and said, this is a community room. Do whatever you'd like. This is a community that's been liberated. But the natural tendency for communities is this. It's about taking. Think about the language. I'm moving there to take advantage of the schools. I'm moving there because I want to take advantage of the parks. I want to move there to take advantage of the cheap housing. We've all heard these phrases, right? That's the natural tendency of community, is I'm moving there to take advantage of the restaurants, the businesses, the people. I'm going to take advantage of the safe schools, all those code words that come with community. I think we have to talk about shifting that paradigm. Governor and Adam Grant just recently wrote a book about happiness and how it stems from giving. We heard people today talk about the power of giving. Giving back to our communities, giving voice to invisible people, to invisible issues. It's about giving. Ultimately, I think the happiness of communities Sustainable communities comes from this. It comes from the power of giving. We've had many people talk about sustainability tonight. And the, one of the first people that walked through the door tonight, I said, we really take a broad view of what sustainability means. It truly is about social justice, economic justice, and environmental justice. Every community has people that aren't treated well. Whether it's about race, or class, or disability, or other things. Every community has social justice issues. And you can choose to take from that community, or you can choose to give some attention to those issues. Don't allow there to be invisible people and invisible issues in this community. Poverty affects all of us. Maybe in our household, maybe in our neighborhood, maybe in our community, or maybe in what we now call our larger world community. We know this. If we don't make an effort to change poverty and the impacts of the economic justice issues in our community, the cost on those issues is only going to grow geometrically. 
We can choose to give attention to that now, or we can pay and pay and pay later. I implore you, now is the time to give to your community. And lastly, I truly believe that we have a responsibility and a duty to our planet that we can give as individuals. You know how interconnected we are these days? Do you know how much of an ecosystem we are? The actions that I take tonight and take tomorrow morning affect you. And if we can get into that mindset, we will leave our planet better for our kids and generations so they can be happy, so they can then give again. I took the news in Boston really hard. I'm a runner not fast enough to ever run in Boston. But it was really hard for me to hear what happened. We are a darn good society on giving during crises, right? We've heard the stories. In crises, we can give blood, and we can give food, and we can give shelter, and we can give our time, and our talents, and our treasure. In crisis? But can we give every day? Can we do the small things that matter? Can we step up and not allow people to be invisible in our community or let there be invisible issues that aren't talked about because they're too hard to have conversations? I think too many of the tragedies that have happened are because we've had invisibility. We've had people taking from communities and not giving voice. So I ask you to leave here tonight and rethink how you can build your community in a sustainable way. Take when it's time to take, but give. Give abundantly. And then all of us will be able to have that deep happiness that Adam Grant tells us about in that book, Give and Take. We saw this tonight. We saw the idea that it's about people and planet and profit and all of those pieces of justice that appealed to us. Those are the invisible people we need to take care of. So leave here and give. Give your attention to the little things. Give your attention to kids. Give your attention to the environment. Give your attention to public health. Give your attention to yourself. Give, give, give. The happiness inside will multiply and our communities will be sustained. Thank you and good night.